Welcome to the Daybreak with Jeff Slakey podcast. I'm so happy you found us. Please subscribe, rate, review, and share this with your circle of influence. It's a collection of the interviews, news, and conversation during Daybreak with Jeff Slakey on iFiber One News Radio, KMAS, weekdays from 6 to 9. Good Wednesday morning to you, the fourth day of November, the day after Election Day. And Spencer Hughes, as the dust starts to settle, well, what do we know? Good morning. How you doing? Hey, what's going on? We know a lot of the local stuff more than the national stuff. Was I premature at three this morning to declare victory? I'm just wondering, is that kind of premature? Maybe we should have waited till later on in the show. Well, Grapeview Dog Catcher does not normally merit a large look on election result night. Hey, we need a dog but catcher here. That's a good idea. Just for you. We'll we'll take a deep dive into that race here early this morning. Now we will have throughout the morning not only the local election results here uh, for Mason County and the surrounding areas, but also we'll uh, dip into ABC's coverage as major votes are still being counted across the country. And uh, the race for the presidency is still up in the air as many, many states will uh, count more ballots today. Today on the show, we have Dick Taylor and Wendy Smith from the Port of Shelton for their Port of Call segment. And uh, we're uh, scheduled to have in through the morning Mason County Auditor Patty McGuire uh, talking about last night, how everything went and uh, what to expect today uh, in in the uh, realm of more votes being counted. But uh, what do you have first off, though, Spence, before we get to the election results, the weather today, how's it going to look? Well, it poured yesterday. It's going to pour again today. 90 percent chance through the day. A pretty steady rain for the uh, for the day. A high of 61 today. Democratic Governor Jay Inslee has become the first incumbent elected to a third term in Washington state in more than 40 years, beating Republican challenger Lauren Culp. Inslee, who briefly ran for president last year, has been a frequent critic of Republican President Donald Trump, especially his handling of the coronavirus pandemic. Culp, police chief of the small town of Republic, campaigned in part against Inslee's coronavirus restrictions like mandatory masks, saying they infringe on people's constitutional rights. Governors in Washington state are not subject to term limits though most haven't served more than two terms. In Mason County, County Commissioner Randy Netherland is leading over Ted Jackson, 51-47. Kevin Schutte ran unopposed, so he will remain in his position. Tom Farmer is ahead over John Komen in the PUD3 District 2 race. In the 35th, Dan Griffey looks to hold the lead over Colton Myers, and Drew McEwen leads over Darcy Huffman. In the 22nd, Sam Hunt, Lori Dolan, and Jessica Bateman each lead their challengers for that district's House and Senate race. Republican U.S. Representative Jamie Herrera Butler and Democratic U.S. Representative Kim Schreier held early leads after tough re-election fights in Washington's closely split 3rd and 8th congressional districts. Meanwhile, former Tacoma Mayor Marilyn Strickland was Poised to win an open seat over fellow Democrat Beth Dolio, a state representative in the 10th. Herrera Butler faced a challenge from Democratic political science professor Carolyn Long in the state's most expensive congressional race this year, a rematch of the 2018 election. Schreier was trying to retain her position as the only Democrat elected to represent the 8th district. She faced a challenge from Republican Army veteran Jesse Jensen. Washington state voters approved a sex education referendum allowing Democrats' wide-ranging mandate for public schools to stand and take effect later this school year. R-90 was Washington's only statewide ballot measure this time and the nation's first sex ed fight to be decided at the ballot. Passing vote upholds the state Senate bill approved in March by Democrats without any Republican support. This quickly triggered immediate and immense backlash. Also, Current Superintendent of Public Instruction Chris Reichdahl leading his challenger for his race. Denny Heck leads Marco Leas in the Lieutenant Governor race. Kim Wyman holds her lead over Gail Tarleton for Secretary of State. Again, more local measures as Fire District 11's bond measure is passing. Fire District 12 as well passing. The McCleary school levy is passing, but it's very tight here. 617 to 572. Voter turnout in Mason County sits at 74.17%, and an estimated 1,300 ballots are left to be counted. 
That will happen tonight at 6. Mason County Public Health was notified of four additional Mason County residents that tested positive for COVID-19, bringing the total to 589 positive cases in Mason County. And the Washington State Department of Corrections says over half the residents of a work release facility in Seattle have tested positive for COVID-19. The Seattle Times reports the outbreak of Bishop Lewis work release on Seattle's First Hill has spiked since two cases were identified on October 16th. As of October 30th, 28 of Bishop Lewis's 49 residents had contracted the virus. Testing of other residents didn't start until October 20th, four days after the first infections were discovered. Correction spokesperson Susan Biller says that that's because the first positive test came back on a Friday and staff was off for the weekend, then off again Monday, October 19th, due to state-mandated furloughs. Yeah, wow. Yikes on that story. Make sure, please, you do what you can to help reduce the spread and wear your masks and uh, keep that social distance. The state of Washington will take over management of most wolves within its borders early next year. This is a continuation of a story we've been uh, reporting on the last couple of weeks. The U.S. government announced last week that gray wolves in the lower 48 would be delisted from the Federal Endangered Species Act. The Department of Fish and Wildlife and Indian Tribes have for years been managing a growing population of wolves in the eastern third of the state. DFW often finds itself in the middle of conflicts between ranchers and environmentalists when wolves eat livestock. Freshman Jaden Delora has been named the starting quarterback for Washington State when the Cougars open their season at Oregon State on Saturday. First-year coach Nick Rolovich said Delora will take the first snap at Oregon State. A true freshman from Honolulu, Delora won a three-way competition with redshirt sophomore Cameron Cooper and redshirt freshman Gunnar Cruz. Delora is thought to be the first true freshman quarterback to start for the Cougars in a season opener. Rolovich was hired from Hawaii and pointed to Dolores' familiarity with the run-and-shoot offense Rolovich has installed. Well, that'll be exciting to find out what happens with the Cougs as they start their season, as you mentioned, against Oregon State. Oregon after that, then Stanford, and then the traditional Apple Cup. Uh, I don't know if they're going to call it the Apple Cup or what, but it's against uh, Washington on November 27th. This weekend, the Seahawks play the Buffalo Bills with a pregame at 8 and a kick at 10. The Hawks are presented by Shelton Health and Rehab, Riviera's Shellfish, South Sound Appliance, Dogtown Grooming, Neal's Pharmacy, and the Shelton Athletic Club. Again today, more election results, conversations with the Port of Shelton. Mason County Auditor Patty McGuire as well stops in this morning. We will uh, continue to talk about the election nationally with status updates from ABC and get the weather in from Spencer. It's all here on Daybreak. Good morning. From the i Fiber One News Radio Studios, you're listening to Daybreak. Hey, good morning, everybody. On this day after Election Day, Mason County Auditor Patty McGuire on the phone line early this morning. Good morning, Patty. Good morning, Jeff. Nice to talk with you here. We've been reporting in on some of the results here. It looks like it was a uh, about seventy four percent turnout last night. How did uh, how did everything go for you? I know you and the crew at the uh, elections office have been working very hard the last uh, month or so to make this as smooth as possible. It went quite well. Um, no no major hiccups. A few small bumps in the road along the way, but you know that's. That's why we practice and prepare, and um, so uh, we were we had good uh, we had a, a lot of success with our effort to get people to vote early, and that really paid off. And that's why uh, we're seeing seventy four percent of uh, Mason County voters their ballots are are in and counted, and um, and we know the results uh, so early. When it comes to the efforts, or was there any anybody show up to the elections office last night that it would appear to be intimidating or anything like that? Absolutely not. Uh, we we were prepared. Um, there's things uh, going on nationally and um, and around the state that we were hearing about, and so uh, we were prepared for that. Uh, but uh, it was. It was darn quiet uh, <laughs> at 8.30, well, so um, that, we were happy about that. 
and more uh, ballots. It looks like maybe a 1,300 or so uh, are outstanding. And then this, at 6 tonight, you'll release the, the latest results? So what, what we will do today is uh, at 8 o'clock this morning, we do a post-election audit. So we do a randomly uh, selected uh, number of batches of ballots on a randomly selected race, and we count it by hand to make sure that our electronic counting equipment is operating um, exactly as it should and that our numbers are exactly correct. Uh, we'll go out and empty the drop boxes because at 8 o'clock last night we locked drop boxes um, with one person there because you need two people to empty the drop boxes. So all the ballots that are in the drop boxes will come in this morning and we'll go to the Shelton Post Office and pick up the mail. So. Uh, there are going to be a lot more than, than 1,200 ballots to count uh, before we're done, and we don't certify until November 24th. So uh, there's there's still a ways to go because, uh, you know, by law, a ballot mailed yesterday by a soldier in Korea or Kuwait um, has time to get back to us and be counted, or a, a snowbird in Arizona, or you know, any, any Mason County resident, wherever they are in the world, um, they, they get to vote as long as it was postmarked by yesterday. When you see the national results and some of the states that are still uh, holding off, what, what are your thoughts on that? No, I mean, there's obviously, there's still not time, there's still plenty of ballots out to be counted, so premature uh, state grabs or that's not happening anymore it seems like uh, after some of the last couple cycles maybe the the major news media got a little ahead of themselves on their skis is that yeah. kind of what you're seeing this morning i think so i mean um with the changes that happened around the country with frankly states trying to be like washington and and make it easier to vote um you know, those changes take time it took quite a while for Washington to convert to all vote by mail. It, you know, it's, it's, it's a big shift going from all polling place elections to uh, a third, a half, three quarters of your voters uh, voting early or by mail. And, and you know, the, the, the slowness we are seeing in results, part of that is state laws just not catching up with those changes that you know the fact that in Pennsylvania they couldn't start counting um, absentee ballots until yesterday morning. Uh, you, when one percent voted absentee, that worked. When a third or a half of your voters vote absentee, that uh, means you're going to get very late results. So you know, I think that's what we're seeing, and people are just going to need to be patient. Mason County Auditor Patty McGuire, thank you so much for getting up early talking with us here on the Daybreak Show. And when the uh, next counts are out tonight, we'll get those results posted up on our website. Patty, thank you. And a big thanks to everybody at the at the elections office. Uh, it's been fun working with them over this month and learning uh, about thank where you your know. ballot goes and all that good stuff. All right, buddy. We'll talk to you later. You're listening to Daybreak on i Fiber one News Radio. Well, good morning, everybody. Jeff Slakey and Spencer Hughes on the Daybreak Show as it's time to find out what's doing at the Port of Shelton with Dick Taylor and Wendy Smith. Hello. Hello. Good morning. We are into November. The temperatures are starting to drop. What kind of... Oh, the frost is on the pumpkin. It certainly is. It certainly is. What kind of fall uh, maintenance do you guys annually do to get things prepared? Well, we just get get ready for winter. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... The big thing is to make sure tenants are um, kind of watching their water, or their pipes sure. um, for any bursts um, mm-hmm. and kind of keeping, we usually remind them to keep a drip, you know, in the, in the sinks or whatever. Um, we do a lot of, um, right now we've just been doing some major, I mean, even mowing still just because it's been a warm yeah. October and stuff. So just the, if you haven't been around the port, go, go around. It's just looking amazing. Um, we do a lot of end of year projects as well. Um, mm-hmm. Our budget kind of dictates what we do. And with this year, as you know, with COVID, um, things kind of got put on hold. So some of the end of the year, you know, we were going to redo the sign at Jones Prairie. So different things that were kind of trying to get yeah, done sure. before year end but yeah the main thing is we just want to make sure that people are safe in the freezing temperatures right. and roofs you know with the rains the roofs start leaking we've, yeah. we've had some 
indicators if that's going to happen or not. So we do look for that. But yeah, yeah. make sure the equipment's up and running. You know, our snow plows yep. are ready. Yep. You know, yep. all that sort of yep. stuff's ready to go. How much help do you guys offer to the county or the city if that's worse? If that's the case, if they need gear, I just I just just thought about that. Yeah, we never have because yeah. we have our own series of roads, you know. And by the time they do one, you know, sweep around the whole property, it's time to go back around yeah, again if it's snowing uh -huh. that hard. Um, so we never have done a shared kind of environment, but I'm sure if we but had we've some never kind asked of, for the, for them either. Yeah, yeah so, if we've done know. some kind of. You know, if there's a storm of the century, <laughs> this is the year it'll happen. Right. right? And they so. just jinxed us on that one. So, yeah, sorry, sorry about that. I guess. No, you're good. Uh, the other big thing as we uh, mm -hmm. move into the fall in 2021, big updates to the website eventually here. We're going to, yeah, this month, yeah. we're going to see something. Yeah. I talked about um, a couple months back that we were redoing, and of course, things just take longer than you anticipate. But yeah, this month we should start to go live. So, our, our old website has still been functioning, but our new one should be transitioned in this month and um, hopefully no quirks, but it should be more yeah. user friendly and cool. just simpler and have our new logo and all the good stuff. So well, it is important to make the change after you guys uh, sold, sold, sold off the port to the marina properties. Yes. This yep. Year. Yes. Yep, yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, we changed, had to change our logo because. Yeah, of exactly. Yeah. yeah. Eventually down the road, we'll, we'll have to do some sort of a re re look back at the year that that was because a lot of things did happen yeah, yeah um but just with COVID, it's been hard yeah. to kind of keep Report our eyes on yeah. <laughs> yeah interesting uh well good stuff and make sure that well, we wrote a humongous check oh what for yeah. well the the runway completion project oh yeah on the runway mm -hmm. two point so the contractor the actually um the actual contractor it's 2.1 million, 2 .1 million. Uh -huh. so we write that check which is somewhat frightening <laughs> and then do you actually have right. to write it out yeah to well um, m-i-l-l-i-o -L 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 yeah no <laughs> oh my god our system does okay. that but i sign it yeah. <laughs> and then um but yeah it's kind of a process because yeah. we have money that's making you know higher interest in the state investment pool so we have to you know bring that money over and fund our own account and then write our check and wow. then of course faa reimburses us but that's all a a process so you we have to spend the money before we can ask for reimbursement uh -huh. so we're just lucky we have the money yeah and, but it is kind of unnerving it's kind of a big deal so yeah, <laughs> the biggest, big probably check. the biggest yeah. check we've ever written yeah so. wow that's great and yeah. it was a, a big project long time coming yeah. for sure yeah. Yeah. yeah dick taylor wendy smith the port of shelton here uh be on the lookout for a new website soon at port .com. also on social media uh, for sure dick wendy good to see you guys you too good thank to be you here. I Fiber One News Radio, 1030 KMAS and FM 1033 presents Daybreak. Again, good Wednesday morning to you. The Daybreak Show continues on this day after Election Day. And well, how are you feeling this morning, Spencer? It's uh, for a lot of folks across, I don't know, I guess, since we don't know the winner, does that make it even more? more stressful. Yesterday was supposed to be the most stressful day for over half of Americans. Election day. Isn't that amazing? It really is. When I saw this, I had to reread it a couple of times. So they found that 55% going into the election, this was taken obviously before yesterday, believed that yesterday would be the most stress-filled day of their lives. I had to reread that because I thought maybe in November of the fall of 2020, says of their whole lives. And I thought, how can that possibly be? I mean, there's things like being shot at in war, being diagnosed with cancer, losing a child, losing a house, bankruptcy, losing your career. I mean, there's well, things what, far more what stress, about stressful. The, I mean, there's a lot of positive days that produce a lot of stress as well. Your wedding day, birth of a child. That's it. That's yeah, you're right. You're right. Too. You know, <laughs> it's true that, I mean, stress... We associate with it being bad, which it generally is, but, you know, stress can also uh, inspire you to, you know, I don't know, the stress of your health can lead you to get in better shape. The stress of uh, a final exam can lead you to study more. So I, I just, I don't believe that election days, in the fact that election day would be stressful for, for people other than the people running, right? I mean, you would think it's far more stressful for Biden and for Trump probably than for the voter overall in the whole scheme of things. 
is that we're putting too much energy into something, I think. And this is the first election in my lifetime where I'm totally detached from the results. I, uh, I'm kind of proud of myself that I, I got kind of in a Zen mood this election year where I'm not, I stayed up late last night out of curiosity more than out of being in, on the edge of my seat. Like, oh my gosh, it has to go this way or I won't be happy in the morning or it has to go this way or this is going to happen. And I think that's why there's so much anxiety is that people are just, they're putting a hundred percent of their energy into this when they got to just kind of let go and realize that whoever wins, we're going to, we've always been okay. We've always been okay. No matter who it was going to the first presidents, we've always survived to this point. We've survived every administration. Think of it that way, right? No matter what we thought of it, going into it, we survived it. We're here. That's a good point. And I think for a lot of folks four years ago, they thought, oh my gosh, you know, what, What's going to happen? But the guardrails that people kept talking about over the years seem to remain. You're right. I mean, it's not January 20th yet. We don't know what's going to happen if we'll transfer to a new person or or Trump remains our president. But, yeah, there's a lot. People are just so... If this doesn't happen, then yeah. it's the end of the world. Just I, tightly so you, wound. You stayed up late... I stayed up late just out I, of curiosity in the process and the polling and the exit polling. You know, I, I like that. I'm still a political junkie at heart, maybe. But I wasn't, this is the first one where I wasn't sweating bullets like, you know, oh my gosh, this has to happen or, you know, I'm not going to get any sleep the next six months. Uh, it was very relaxing yeah. compared to other elections that I've, and I've had to cover them on the air too. I mean, late into the night, you know, play by play. And that was something I, sure. I couldn't see myself ever doing again. It just kind of it makes you crazy. I mean, getting results every five seconds and or now there's two more votes for Biden, one one more vote for Trump. Let's put those in the column and it just gets stressful. Well, as the, you know, as the time zones closed last night, you know, people go, as soon as it closes, too close to call, too early to call. I'm like, no, no kidding. It just ended. Let's take some time. Let's take a breath and see what happens when, the numbers come away. It's it's a long process as these numbers are counted. I mean, these Midwest states, these upper Midwest, they're, it's not like an overwhelming majority of people live there. These are tight races. And so you're going to be staring at this for the next couple of days. Yeah, the thing you have to, we have to remember, too, as a president, whoever it ends up being the next four years doesn't get inaugurated at noon today. I mean, there's that cushion. Right. I mean, <laughs> whether we know we knew last night going to bed or we know at noon today or noon tomorrow or in three weeks, I mean, it's still before January where, you know, it just adds anxiety, I think. But we build up this anxiety, and, and I think we're to blame. I think the mass media kind of hypes everything up and, and creates a lot of this feeling of anxiety. I think the doom scrolling... I think they ought to do a study on who's the most stressed out over the election. I guarantee you it's the people who have been doom scrolling for the last 12 months. I mean, just everything they follow is election, sure. election, election, Trump, Trump, Biden, Biden, conservative, liberal. The ones that are fixated on that, they're the most stressed out. The people who are kind of, you know, following the cat videos on their Twitter feed, I don't think are as stressed out. <laughs> Americans are spending or trying to spend about 20 minutes a day in stress easing techniques, most popular walks, exercising, uh, breathing, 35% picking up hobbies, 27% are baking. So that's how people are trying to change those uh, stressful situations there. And we're going to cover the election through the rest of the day, <clears throat> excuse me, not only uh, through Daybreak, but then with Tom Hartman from 9 to noon and Seb Gorka from noon to 3. ABC News will have updates as well in what's going on. So don't stress out. The coverage will be here when you need it on AM 1030 and FM 1033 as more Daybreak continues. Thank you so much for listening to today's Daybreak with Jeff Slakey podcast. Again, I'm so happy and honored you found us and chose to listen. Please subscribe, rate, review, and share this with your circle of influence. It's a collection of some of the interviews, news, and conversation during Daybreak with Jeff Slakey on iFiber One News Radio KMAS weekdays from 6 to 9. Thank you so much again and talk with you next time.